So let me now um, translate, sort of uh, pivot then into the internet governance realm. So the, 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 the broad theme that we're trying to um, advance is the idea that an open internet, uh, uh, a robust uh, global open internet, um, is good for growth, it's good for innovation, and it's good for democracy. Um, these are sort of the core themes. And in these different policy areas, I know you heard from Larry Strickling earlier this morning, and I think we'll hear from him again this afternoon. Um, uh, we've been trying to advance those policies. In broadband, uh, the FCC has produced a broadband plan, which we're trying to implement. Connectivity is fundamental for us to be able to deliver any of these benefits that we're talking about. Um, spectrum reform is part of that, which is to say getting more of our wireless airwaves dedicated to data. Um, uh, uh, privacy, I think we, we clearly recognize that the online privacy environment uh, needs some help. The 40-page privacy policies uh, that you're asked to click on um, aren't delivering people particularly meaningful notice uh, and enabling particularly meaningful choice about um, privacy policies and practices. We've been pushing, um, uh, the president, I should say, has been publicly um, reiterating his support for network neutrality. The FCC is figuring out what that means in detailed format, but it's fundamental uh, to us that the internet should be non-discriminatory um, uh, uh, as to different speakers and different um, producers of content out on the internet. Um, in information policy, we've been looking at things like uh, open access to taxpayer-funded research, disability access, um, and of course, uh, uh, Secretary Clinton has articulated a kind of an agenda around freedom of speech and freedom of expression, which in the international realm tries to capture this set of policies. So um, translating that then into the sort of internet governance framework, um, you know, we have these uh, basic tools um, uh, and I think it's appropriate to look at each one sort of separately. We have technical organizations like the Internet Engineering Task Force, World Wide Web Consortium, that do voluntary work to produce standards and uh, a voluntary private sector coordination. Um, we have administrative organizations, ICANN is an example of that, that try to provide the essential, necessary, centralized functions, for example, uh, if you're going to have globally unique identifiers, um, uh, at least as we've currently got it designed, you need to have some kind of hierarchy that can be administered uh, 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 in an effective way. Um, voluntary partnerships and best practices, there are many different examples of this going back to the um, advertising principles uh, from the mid-90s and the privacy principles. Uh, that uh, the FTC has been working on um, to uh, organizations like the Global Network Initiative now, which tries to coordinate, I guess, and, and consolidate best practices for uh, information companies working in um, uh, restrictive environments, um, countries which restrict the flows of information. And finally, you've got the very clunky formal instruments like treaties, laws, and regulations. Um, the features, I think, that you want to bring to each of these are, are uh, echo the ones that we've outlined in the open government work of, of, of the Obama administration, openness, transparency, and participation. Um, openness is both a normative value, which is to say um, uh, a good in and of itself, but it's also an important network value. In other words, openness in the way that the network functions helps everybody who's connected to the network understand what's going on in the network um, and... Uh, uh, and um, uh, make decisions for themselves that make sense, given what they can see and what they can know. It's particularly important for um, the network uh, infrastructure players themselves, but it's no less true for uh, people at the edge of the network. Um, transparency is a sort of can be a sort of loosey-goosey term. It's related to openness in one sense, but um, it has a particular meaning in the context of a voluntarily interconnected set of networks, which is to say that uh, transparency there means that the thing that you put in is the same thing that comes out at the other end. The network is transparent in that sense. And uh, uh, I think uh, transparency in, uh, in the network needs to be accompanied with transparency in policymaking and transparency about policymaking. Finally, there's participation, which is to say that um, uh, there are now many different online techniques for people to participate and coming up with uh, uh, shrewd and uh, skillful use of those techniques to do policy making, whether it's technical standards, uh, administrative coordination, or um, even the development of uh, laws, regulations, voluntary practices, and so forth, allows you to strengthen all of those processes and the outcomes that they produce because they're seen as more legitimate, because they are, in fact, uh, 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 the product of um, an open process in which anyone can participate. 
Uh, I think there are a lot of problems that we, you know, encounter whenever we're designing a participatory mechanism. This is certainly true uh, from the perspective of the White House, but it's no less true for those uh, internet governance organizations. Um, there's a tension between uh, just getting raw input from anybody who wants to submit it um, to uh, having deliberative process where you actually have people go through a learning curve and work through material and get up to um, uh, speed on an issue in more depth um, and then uh, produce uh, an opinion or an output or an input into a process. Um, similarly, we run into these tensions between self-selection, which is to say that when you run a, an open, a, a process which is formally open, it may only be that certain groups of people can afford to show up or choose to show up or uh, very vested interests um, uh, with a stake in the outcome show up. Um, and uh, um, uh, uh, you can contrast that with models which try to be more representative where you are um, reflecting the full diversity of populations or views um, that may be affected by the organization making the decision. Those are tensions, and there aren't easy ways of solving them. I do think that there are these core principles that can be applied to internet governance um, institutions and processes. They're very similar to the ones that we are uh, trying to follow in um, internet policy writ large, which is to say that we all have an interest in keeping the internet global, which is to say that everybody who's connected to the internet everywhere around the world should be able to reach everybody else who's connected to the internet. Um, uh, we usually include the qualifier lawful. You should be able to connect to any lawful service or site on the internet. Um, the internet should be open. Uh, the internet should be uh, decentralized. Uh, it should be a layered, uh, it is and should be treated as a layered stack of, uh, you can define these layers somewhat differently, but infrastructure, standards and protocols, services, applications, each of those is different and has different considerations, different mechanisms, different actors, different players. And the internet governance uh, 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 work that we are doing needs to recognize that and treat, you, treat each of those layers differently. The internet needs to evolve. We shouldn't assume that the way that the internet is now is, is magically you know, perfect, even though it has been spectacularly successful. Um, the internet can and should evolve. Um, uh, you know, query whether the hierarchical DNS, uh, you know, needs to continue to exist for the rest of our adult lives. It may not. Maybe there are better ways of doing identifiers. Maybe there are better ways of uh, uh, speeding uh, packets to their destinations. Um, there may be uh, more distributed, more open um, uh, models. Anyway, we need to be open to that kind of evolution and not allow the Internet to be hardened into its current architecture indefinitely. But finally, of course, the Internet is working. Um, the Internet is doing a spectacular job of connecting people, delivering services, enabling innovation, and so forth. There are many things to be concerned about, but it is breathtaking the extent to which in my adult lifetime uh, this communications network has opened possibilities, uh, enabled change, and uh, uh, presented uh, 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 encouraging new horizons for uh, culture, for uh, uh, the practice and, and uh, performance of democracy. And, uh, and so forth. So uh, uh, um, I'll close saying that also internet governance institutions need to recognize that it is functioning awfully well uh, and mess with that success um, uh, uh, at its peril.